today we'd like to talk a little bit about the budget that's been put together for 2019. I know that there's been significant new development and, um, and we've been working to, to build our, our property tax base in the city of Sheboygan. How is that impacting the tax collection right now? You know, if you, if you uh, Mayor, if you look at the locations of many of the uh, projects that have occurred in the last year or two, uh, a majority of those projects have been included in uh, what's referred to as a tax incremental district or a, a TID district. And um, as a result, uh, the, the taxes paid on that new value uh, as a result of a, proper, a, pro, uh, a project, whether it's commercial or multifamily, the taxes uh, of that increased value go directly to that tax incremental uh, district's fund balance, fund budget. And as a result, it is not available for general uh, operation purposes. So for an interim period, it could be as long as 27, 28 years, um, monies will be, those tax dollars will be spent on paying off debt or paying for improvements uh, surrounding uh, some of these new redevelopment areas, uh, but uh, as I mentioned, are not available uh, for general operation purposes. As a result, uh, the city's overall tax space, non-TIF district, uh, has actually uh, held and has not increased. And as a result, uh, again, the city's relying upon uh, existing properties to to pay for the costs associated with providing services uh, and these new uh, projects, the taxes uh, substantially are going to pay off, again, special charges, uh, special improvements, uh, or incentives that go with redeveloping some of these sites. Now, when we, uh, we, we've seen a lot of residential development. Uh, uh, we had probably over 300 units that have been built in the last year and a half or so. Um, you know, and this is a different type of housing, and it's market rate housing, and we've had to incentivize uh, some of the, the, the developments. Could you explain a little bit why we've done that and how it's worked out? Yeah. As you mentioned, uh, market rate uh, uh, rental uh, multifamily uh, is, is something that the city has not seen uh, for quite a while in the downtown area. Uh, and as a result, uh, the investors who proposed these projects were really almost acting like sort of pioneers. Uh, and uh, no doubt it was uh, a, a requirement of them to uh, develop uh, support by a, a, a banker uh, to get financing. And because a new um, project and the rent that would be required, uh, there was a concern by the developer. As a result, uh, they asked the city if we could, in essence, close the gap. In many cases, the development costs were higher than normal uh, because in most cases, they're on redevelopment sites. So I think 100% of the sites had environmental issues. So in many, in more times than not, uh, any incentive the city provided was to go for paying for this higher development cost. Uh, in, in almost all cases, it was uh, environmental issues associated with the redevelopment site. And I think we've we've done um, you know something similar with the Meyer project. There's a TIF district to serve that, and again, uh, they didn't have a clean site. They had to demolish a building, and they had to mitigate the lead and asbestos and, and things like that. Uh, so we used it there. And could you talk a little bit about our new industrial park that's being constructed right now? There's also a TIF district in place for that, and how that's going to play to develop into developing that new site. Uh, this is a very exciting project for the city of Sheboygan. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, South Point Enterprise Campus is the official name for this uh, new business park uh, adjacent to I-43, so great visibility for a company that's looking to locate uh, in our community or maybe an existing business that wants to expand uh, and is looking for sort of a unique location. Um, the, the price per acre is a little bit higher than maybe what you would see in, in neighboring communities, but we think with all that the city of Sheboygan has to offer, uh, that again, this is the location for a company that 
uh, wants to locate or, as I mentioned, is currently in the community and, and looking to maybe expand and simply doesn't have the room where they're located. Uh, we will have shovel-ready sites available for companies to start constructing as early as December this year. Uh, there'll be, probably be some minor um, projects that will need to be completed uh, in spring of 2019, but substantially uh, it will be done uh, by the, before the end of this year. Could you talk a little bit about the, um, the bids we received and the costs that, that we ended up paying for the construction of that site? Yeah. The city was fortunate. Uh, the city worked with our uh, uh, engineering consultant. <coughs> we recognize with what's going on with Foxconn in the southeast uh, corridor, or corner of, of the state uh, that it was important for us to be uh, slightly ahead of, of that bidding process. And we were very fortunate in that uh, by a month, uh, maybe six weeks, we were able to ask and open up bids. And as a result, we saved uh, approximately five or six million dollars in what our projections were for cost to uh, perform grading work, install sewer water, uh, roads, and, and other utilities. So uh, we were very pleased. In fact, we also uh, got out the door. Uh, the, the proposals and ultimately the bidding deadline for City Hall. So we think both projects, we save the taxpayers of Sheboygan significant money by uh, timing perfectly uh, the request for proposals for bids. Yeah, I think on City Hall, if I recall correctly, the Quashus bid was a million dollars less than the other two bidders that were bidding for that project. Yes. And I think, uh, you know, it was very efficient. Uh, they uh, decided to uh, rent a robot to uh, take down a lot of the interior walls in City Hall, and that really accelerated the, pro the process and, and, uh, and made it a lot less expensive for them. And they, this robot had a, a jackhammer that was on a hydraulically controlled arm, and it was just amazing to watch some of the videos of, uh, of it working inside of City Hall to prepare the site for our project. Next, I'd like to go on and talk a little bit about uh, fees. Are there any uh, increases in any uh, of the fees that we charge uh, property owners in the city? Yeah, th three fees come to mind. Uh, first is water rates. Uh, there is no proposed increase in water rates for two in 2019. Uh, sewer rates, uh, there is a, a recommendation that uh, those rates be increased by 7%, and that will go, be going to Common Council as early as, as Monday. And then last is garbage charge or a fee. Uh, that is placed again on the utility bill. Uh, it is, uh, it's equivalent to $5 per month and there's no recommended change to that amount. Very good, that's great to hear. Um, now we want to talk a little bit about WSCS and the, uh, uh, the television of, uh, uh, televising of some of our city council meetings. And there's been some uh, concerns expressed by people over the years and currently that uh, those transmissions aren't as good at quality as, uh, as many other uh, programs they see. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, how we're going to correct that? Yeah. Uh, we've received uh, presentations by a couple constituents in the city of Sheboygan expressing concern that uh, they don't have access to um, our video on demand option, which many of the viewers may be uh, obtaining um, uh, the, the, the ability to uh, receive uh, our, our, our program today. Uh, but uh, in essence, we have sort of a generation of, of residents that may be relying solely upon uh, cable TV as, as an option for uh, viewing uh, programs like this. Um, the, with the installation of, uh, of a wire uh, connecting the studio to uh, the head, head end of uh, Spectrum uh, uh, cable broadcast, uh, that wire is probably 40 years old and, and has never been upgraded to a fiber. And uh, what is recommended by the, the Finance and Personnel Committee is to go ahead and uh, make that investment uh, at, a, at a cost of $80,000. Um, and it will, you know, the $80,000 will be spent on the, uh, the newest uh, technology. And so we hope that 
with that investment, uh, we'll be good to go for, for decades to come. And I hear we're also going to be uh, putting some closed captioning on that as well. Uh, so that'll be another attribute uh, for them. Um, I just want to thank you and the staff and the finance department uh, and all the department heads for the great work that they've done in, in bringing this budget together. Uh, I really want to commend everybody for their uh, thought and, and time that went into uh, putting all these together. So congratulations on presenting a great budget to the city council for their consideration. And when will the council make their final decision on the budget? Yeah, a public hearing will occur in the month of October. Excuse me, and uh, the budget is expected to be wrapped up and, and acted on or voted by the Common Council their first meeting the first Monday in the month of November. Well, that sounds great. Thanks again for uh, your time today, and thanks to all of our viewers for tuning in to learn a little bit more about the Sheboygan City budget for 2019.